Hey guys, you're looking at the world's first all-electric Perodua Asia. That's right, this may look like your regular Asia, but this is an EV. More than that, this was fully developed by a local company right here in Malaysia. And this is to showcase that you can do a full conversion to your regular existing car into an EV at a reasonable cost as well. Interested yet? Let's go find out all the details about this project. This car here is developed by a local company called EV Innovations. You may have seen their previous work, the my car that was loosely based on a Honda Jazz. Now, this one over here is completely based on a local Perodua Asia. And this is again to showcase that you can take any car, convert it into an EV without making it look, you know, too otherworldly. It can look like a regular car, but underneath is a pure electric vehicle. Now you may be wondering about all the costs involved in this car. Now well, this is technically a one-off, so everything is custom made for this car. So the total cost of this particular car is around 50,000 ringgit. But the developers have told me that if this were to be made into mass production with enough volume, you can make this for as little as 20,000 ringgit. Now, how much would you be willing to pay for a full EV conversion right here in Malaysia? Let me know in the comments section below. So obviously the whole engine and transmission have been completely stripped out, replaced by a battery pack sitting where the engine once was. This battery here has a capacity of around 24 kilowatt hours and it's enough to give this car a full range of 220 kilometers. In fact, the developers have even gone almost 250 kilometers on a single charge with this setup. The battery pack is actually mounted very low within the engine bay and everything we see above are just the battery management system and that over there is the aircon compressor because obviously you can't have a car in Malaysia without air conditioning. Now let's talk about the charging situation for this car. So as you can see, the charging port is neatly tucked behind the standard Asia's fuel filler cap. So if you close that up, it looks like any regular Asia from the outside. Using this car's onboard AC charger that's neatly tucked under the boot floor, you can charge it up using a wall box at up to 6 kilowatts, and that can charge the battery pack from 0% to 100% in just 4 hours. If you use your standard domestic 3-pin plug, that's going to take around 12 hours to charge. But in any case, 4 hours to charge this, I think, is more than quick enough. Like I said, this has a range of 220 kilometers, and I think that's more than good enough for everyday use right here in Malaysia. Think about it, if you do 100 kilometers on a single day over a month, that is 3,000 kilometers. I don't think that many of us do that many kilometers a month. So in that sense, 220 kilometers on a full charge for a small city car like this is more than good enough. Because every time you go home, you'll just plug it up and the next day it's a full charge again you can go a full 220 kilometers i think that's even better than using a normal petrol powered car the only way to tell that this isn't a standard asia is by the rear wheels over here as you can see it juts out from the body quite a fair bit and this isn't because of a random spacer this comes out because the developers have fitted hub-mounted motors behind the rims over here. There's one for each of the rear wheels and they're each rated at 12 kilowatts times two, that is 24 kilowatts. And on top of that, there's even a peak power of 48 kilowatts. That's about 64 horsepower. Now, there is no official torque figure just yet, but they have fitted this car on a dyno where they managed to record a maximum torque of around 100 newton meters of torque on the road. 0 to 100 has been recorded at around 11 seconds. That is much, much quicker than a standard Asia. But I think if they were to measure shorter distances, maybe from 0 to 30, 0 to 50, the difference, the advantage over the Asia is going to be much, much more significant. This is going to be much quicker than your regular Asia. And of course, without the rattly three-cylinder engine, this is going to be much more refined as well. And it's also worth noting that the suspension system on this car has been kept completely stopped. Nothing's been changed from the standard car. 
Inside, everything has been kept mostly stock except for this Android head unit. This shows you a bunch of parameters for the battery pack for the electric motors and so on. In the middle here, there is a unique rotary knob gear selector. I think that is pretty unique, especially on a Pro Dual Asia. So you may be wondering about the whole weight of this car. As you know, most EVs in the market are extremely heavy. Most weigh over two tons. But this over here, because of the modest battery size, it actually weighs less than one ton. In fact, it's under 900 kilograms even. Compared to the standard Asia, this is only around 60 kgs more than standard. Plus, with the heavy battery pack taking place of the previous engine and transmission, the weight distribution of this car is pretty much the same as before as well. So it should drive like a regular Asia on the road. So there you go guys, the Produa Asia Electric by local company EV Innovations. They call this the My Car 3.0. What do you think of it? Let me know in the comment section below. And even more important than that, how much would you be willing to pay to convert your existing car into an EV like this? All that in the comments below. And let's hope we can build a future for EV conversions like this right here in Malaysia. Thank you so much for watching everyone and stay safe.